Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. The picture you see here is from the 12Z European Ensemble, looking at the next 15 days of precipitation anomalies. We've been kind of setting this up, uh, and we're just seeing a continuation of the model forecast. This is a, a pretty consistent performance here by all of our long-range models. And overall, we would think of this as a, as a pretty big net positive for South America. Uh, specifically in the north here, they are actively trying to finish a harvest and plant a second crop, the safrina crop, and uh, regions that are going over very dry, like here um, from Goyas to Minas Gerais. This is an area that had seen much above average precipitation leading up to this time period, so a drier stretch uh, is not necessarily going to be a, a major detriment here. Uh, right here in Mato Grosso, you know, overall the precipitation pattern is driest this week and it gets better into week two. So we wouldn't even see this as a as a major negative. You come down here into southern Brazil uh, where the rains really pick up in the, on these stalled out frontal boundaries and through here. And more than likely the crop is at a stage throughout this growing area that it can take on quite a bit of rainfall. So we would look at this particular pattern and say, all right, if it does last for the next maybe 10 to 15 days before it breaks, this is going to be a net positive for much of South America. We've got some new data here from Grace uh, just the other day. It's the root zone soil moisture map. And so you can see this is that area that's going to be seeing those above normal rainfall. And this is going to really come in and help out a region that's in drought. My concern is what's tucked in between. So there's a region right in through here. This would be uh, north of Parana, but part of, of um, Mato Grosso do Sol into southern Goiás, uh, Sao Paulo, that region that may still be uh, in pretty substantial drought. So that's a that's a key growing area that we're going to have to watch. But as I said, a drier week or so, maybe a drier 10 to 15 days in Mato Grosso is, is likely not going to be a major issue, nor will it be an issue here over in the east where we've seen the forecast. Now just thinking about all of this, let's come back to some of the bigger picture ideas we're going to have about this longer range forecast. And the MJO has come back out of the Indian Ocean and moved here over just north of Australia. That's phases four and five. And these would be the phases four, five, and six that do start to, well, to give us this kind of a pattern. Now, again, I'll reiterate something we talked about on Monday. What needs to be watched is once we get out of phase five, do the models curl this back into null space? There's a possibility for that. Does it kind of ride on around into phase seven and eight? That wouldn't necessarily be that odd given the, the fading La Nina, although it's fading very slowly. And then does it make a return back over to this side of the diagram later? And why we care about that so much is that would once again give us a precipitation pattern like this, which would be more detrimental on the Safrina crop in several weeks from now. So we need to see if this is gonna come back. But just kind of explain why I think the MJO is one of the more dominant signals. I'll just kind of walk you through the next 15 days really quickly here. You see, with the MJO currently sitting in this position, we do have subsidence, large-scale subsidence in this area. And that's one of the big reasons why we're, we're missing out on the strength of the monsoon here. In the meantime, there are surface fronts running to the north in Argentina. So entirely different setup here, uh, those fronts versus looking at the, the velocity potentials deep in the atmosphere. As we get out there, though, day five through 10, we start to pick up better rising motion here. What happens is this kind of helps Mato Grosso, but over here, there's going to be some upper level sinking air, which is what's going to continue to keep things a bit drier. But once we get out here to day 10 through 15, there's overall a better signal for the monsoon to kind of regain its strength, at least when looking here at the upper level, like I said, velocity potentials. I would like to show you it by going to the 12Z European model run today. And I just want to get a good look at these fronts coming through Argentina. So playing through Saturday into Sunday, you, you do see right here on a boundary, just stalled out plenty of, of shower and thunderstorm activity. See it there? That's going through Sunday into Monday. And during that same time period, the monsoonal flow is way far to the north rather than curling around like this. And so there's better rains here over the Amazon, but we're in that drier time period uh, here in, in central and eastern Brazil. So when does it start to change? Well, if we play into early next week, go on out there to next Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you start to see better monsoonal circulation showing back up in the models. And then we tend to get a little bit drier in Argentina, but that's typical just given that the fronts are on their way out. So, you know, we think about all of this and we come out there and just look only at week two, right? And what we see is the last kind of holdout for some drier weather is going to be from Mato Grosso do Sol through Goiás, Sao Paulo, and Minas Gerais. But we've already seen the return of better rains from Mato Grosso, Tocantins, and Bahia. And these, again, big areas where we plant a safrina crop. We still notice that the models are, are quite aggressive on keeping the wetter conditions around for Argentina. So what a massive pattern flip we've seen for that area. Now, where does this all go? 
I'll just make a point here that um, the long range forecast using the European weeklies are going to have low predictability. One of my main clues for that is the fact that up until this point, we've seen these strong trades really well forecasted pushing in this direction. Uh, what we end up getting after that, if you just kind of notice, is that the, there's a little bit of a westerly wind burst, or it could just be at much lower trades here. But we seem to lose the signal after about March 7th. So, you know, over the next, I'll call that 10 to 12 days, we've got a pretty clear signal, but I'm concerned about what's going on after this. What takes over as the next kind of dominant mode here in the Pacific that's going to control this monsoon? So when you see the European weeklies, let's go from the 10th of March to the 10th of April, and you start to see drier conditions here with wet returning in this area, I have to just ask, I'm not 100% sure that I see why this pattern is going to end up looking like this or why Argentina's possibly going to favor going back over to dry. So I'd like to see a few more model runs to understand what the pattern is going to do and see if I can't break down the teleconnections a little bit better over the weekend just watching these trends. So we'll keep you posted on this um, and we'll see if this doesn't end up ending, uh, Im impacting excuse me, uh, the crop, especially in the north with that safrina crop growing in. So we'll talk again soon. Have a good rest of your week and I'll catch up with you again on Monday. Thanks.